This latest storm brought heavy rain and strong winds, and that has left many people dealing with major damage to their homes and properties. Whether it's flooding, mudslides, or downed trees, people will be turning to insurance companies for help with repairs. But most standard homeowners' policies do limit what types of storm damage are covered. For more on what may be covered and what likely won't be, let's uh, bring in Carl Sussman from the Sussman Insurance Agency. He also holds a master's degree in insurance management from Columbia. Columbia University. Carl, we always appreciate the time. It's good to see you here. So if someone is watching this and, and they have some type of storm damage to their property, maybe it's a tree that came down in the yard or some type of flooding uh, on their property, what are the most important steps they should take right now? Well, I think it's important for everyone to realize that this is a big deal, right? We knew this, we knew this was coming, but it doesn't matter. When it's here, it's still shock and awe. And there are so many different types of damage that we're seeing. We're seeing water damage, we're seeing flood damage, we're seeing mudslide, we're seeing downed trees, rain-driven water. I mean, you name it, we're seeing all of it. Typically, what I've been telling people, and as you know, because the California homeowners marketplace has been so challenging for the last few years, is for small claims, just try and deal with it unless you absolutely have to file a claim. For something like this, this is what's considered a catastrophe event and what the industry sometimes refers to as a cat event. When there are cat events, those claims are typically not held against the policyholder if they are to file a claim. So the best thing to do at this stage is first, be careful, right? Don't, don't go out, don't try and fix things yourself. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you can to prevent further damage, document everything you can with pictures and cameras, and file the claim with the insurance carrier right away to be sure that you're in the queue to be handled as soon as possible. All right, so how, how do people figure out or how do they know what specific types of storm damage are likely to be covered with, with their standard homeowner's policy? That's the challenge, right? Every, it, it's a little bit different for every policy. They're not specifically boilerplate, but I can give you some general guidelines. If you have water that's entering your house, let's say from the roof, it's water entering from above coming down. That's typically something that would be covered under most homeowners policies. If you're looking at water that's rising from the ground up, that typically is flood coverage. That would be flood damage, and that would need to be covered under, a flood, under an actual flood insurance policy, not a homeowners policy. And then Everything else, mudslide, that sort of thing, is typically not a peril that you can get coverage for at all. But the good news is right now, if I can even call anything good news, is that don't worry about figuring it out. Take the pictures, document it, be sure you've got everything that you can on hand and file the claim and get the process underway so the insurance carrier can do what they can to help you. All right. Uh, well, you, I know you have some advice for, for people, some steps, some simple things that they can do wh whenever we have a storm like this one or, or if we're in sort of that recovery phase like some people are right now. What do you recommend people do? Well, you know, we're in the storm, right? We're literally in the middle of it. And for some reason, we feel like we knew it was coming. We didn't do everything we could. But there are still things we can do right now. And I'll rattle off just a few that I found useful. One is, and you're going to laugh, Turn off your sprinklers. <laughs> People forget they're, uh, they're automatically on and they will just stay on and make the situation worse. Mm. Uh, the next thing is to park your car correctly. If you remember back in driver's ed, they taught you how to turn the wheel just the right way so your car bumps into the curb. When we're looking at rain like this, we're seeing six, seven, eight, ten inches of water. That's more than enough to make the vehicle hydroplane and it will lift up and it will float away. So if you have that car wheel, the car wheels turned, into the curb, you can keep your car from literally leaving on its own and causing damage. Also, stay home if you can. If you can work from home, work from home. And you keep also in mind that your cell phone, you know, the thing that we're all kind of addicted to, uh, is your best friend right now. Because even if there's a power outage, even if your internet goes down, the likelihood is that your cell coverage will still work because that runs on a different infrastructure. So keep your cell phone charged, keep some extra batteries around just in case, that's your connection to the authorities, to the to yeah. people that are going to be there to help you if there is help that you need. And lastly, if it is safe, and I say if, 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 it's still not too late to get up there and try and clean out some of those rain gutters because even though you may have even done it, they're full again, I can almost guarantee yeah, you, no after this storm. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, yeah, there's no doubt about that. They fill up quickly. All right, we have to leave it there. Carl Sussman, always appreciate the advice. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Alex. See you.